this time, we're going to begin to do worship. So, um, yeah, just um, allow the Lord to bless you.
No, you never lost the battle. No, you never lost the battle. And I know, I know, you never will. You never lost the battle. You never lost the battle. You never lost the battle. And you never will. You never lost the battle. You never lost the battle, and you never will. Come on, say, and you never will, and you never will, you never will. Oh, and you never will. You can do all things. Oh, you can do. No, you never lost the battle, and I know, I know, you never will. You can do all things. You can do all things but fail. No, you never lost the battle. No, you never lost the battle, and I. Hallelujah. 
have some other scripture. I'd like to read for you Philippians 4, 6, and 7 from the message translation. It says, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Hallelujah. This is the time you can come to the altar, stay where you are. Those that are watching virtually, we ask you to make your altar work where you are. And come tell God all about your troubles, all about your worries. But I don't want you to worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank him for all he has done. Hallelujah. The way to deal with your worry is through prayer. There is nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, going on in your life that will surprise God. Nothing's going to catch him off guard or, or stump him or, or what the next step should be. So whatever we are dealing with that has us a bit shaken, talking to God can relieve that worry. He can bring comfort with his guidance and direction. Hallelujah. Turn it over to Jesus. He can and will work it out. Hallelujah. But you have to take it to the Lord in prayer. And you have to leave it there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you worry. Don't you give up. And don't you give in. Hallelujah. Stay on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. That's the winning side. Hallelujah. The song says he's never lost a battle. And he never will. So wouldn't you want to be on that side that has never lost a battle? We're always winning. No matter what it looks like. We have won. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you. Give those relationships. Give all of those problems unto the Lord. Let him work it out for you. Hallelujah. He's a burden bound. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the midnight hour, while you're calling, he's on his way. He's turning it around. He's turning it around. It's working in your favor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we glorify you. We magnify your name. When you're done, you may return to your seats. Praising and thanking God. That it's already done. Thank you. We bless you. Now, our pastor, let's celebrate our pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good, church. Give him a big round of applause. Amen. He's good. Come on, thank God. Praise him. Amen. Come on, let's glorify him. Praise him. He's worthy of all the glory. He's worthy of all the praise. Magnify his holy name, amen. Something you just can't sit still and quiet and reserve. You gotta express it, amen. And I thank God so much for the word this morning that uh, Minister uh, Carol Enoch spoke um, on prayer. And I praise God for that word. And I'm praying that he will continue to be my steering wheel, amen. I want to share a, a testimony with you this morning, uh, something that just happened for, for me. I, um, 
I was on my way to a, a service down in uh, Hallandale, whatever, and I, I um, had to fly down. I was going to fly down rather than drive because I was, you know, kind of like tired all day and I didn't want to get on the road and all that. There was a number of issues behind it, but I had already booked the flight. So anyway, got there and I'm um, on the, uh, in the hotel and I went to sleep, of course, got a call around two o'clock in the morning and um, they were calling to say that my, my flight was canceled. And I'm saying, oh no, you know, that's what I'm saying to myself. And it took me a while to go back because I'm trying to adjust it to hearing that news that it, it was canceled. And I got up um, a few hours later, um, went to uh, went into 6 a.m. prayer, and then after that, I just said, I, I'm, I'm going. I already had my, my, my car with me, my rental, and so I, I just put all my stuff in the car and I drove from Jacksonville down to uh, Fort Lauderdale. That's where I was gonna head because I was heading down to see my brother. And my, if you don't know, my brother Junior is the one who um, gosh, he's diabetic, but he had an episode at the beginning of the month where he um, he failed, he couldn't get up. And so he was pretty much down for almost 24 hours until my nephew came to, to get him and um, discovered that he was there on the floor. But the same thing happened when I got down, I said, I called him in advance and he knew I was coming. Um, I didn't hear from him while I was on my way, I was an hour away, and so I went straight to the house. And so I knocked and I hit the doorbell and all those things and he didn't answer, nobody came to the door. So I called my nephew and I said, I can't get your dad to come to the door. Is he there? Did he go somewhere? He said, no, I didn't see him on camera either because they have a camera so we can watch him. And um, he said, I'm coming right over. Came over and um, went to his bedroom and he had fallen again. And uh, the last time my nephew had seen him on camera was five o'clock the day before. So he hadn't taken his insulin, none of that. Um, in fact, he says he doesn't like taking his insulin. Um, that's another story. But at the same time, we were able to call the, uh, the paramedic, paramedics and get him to the hospital. He was disoriented. Um, I want to say he was talking gibberish. I couldn't understand a thing that he was saying. Um, but I, I, what I do, I, I praise God for the, for the timing because when they cancel that flight, they said we can put you on another flight uh, 14 hours from now. And um, I thought to myself, well, they're holding me hostage. I'm not going to let them hold me hostage. I'm going. So that's why I jumped in the car and I drove like it was just easy for me, right? And, um, but I praise God for that because if they hadn't called, I would not have um, gotten to my brother, of course. Somebody would have picked me up at the airport. I wouldn't have had a rental car to, uh, to go and see it. So I praise God for all that. It was all divine. When I was talking with uh, Bishop Michael last night, he said, that was divine. It was divine that they canceled that, that, that flight. It was divine that I was able to, to hold on to that car that I had because I'd normally return it and just take the shuttle over. But I thank God so much. Got there, of course, got him in the hospital. Um, last, uh, went by to see him before I came back up to Gainesville. And when I walked in and, and started talking to him, I said, wow, your speech has returned because his speech had just complete, he was just way all up over the place. But I thank God so much for that uh, timing, God's timing, it was divine. And um, sometimes you don't know what God is doing and when you feel that unction in your spirit, you may not hear a voice, but you might know on the inside, I need to go and take care of something, or I need to go and do something, and that's what happened. Um, my brother Junior, you can keep him in your prayers. We gotta get him some help. Uh, because he lives alone, but at the same time, um, it's important that we pay attention to that unction, all right? You may call it my, the spirit on the inside, whatever you call it, but follow your heart, amen? Follow your heart, and because of that, um, I really believe my brother's alive today, because I don't know what would have happened if I wouldn't have followed my heart and wouldn't have gone by the house, don't know. All right, I don't want to even think about it, but God moved by his spirit and we were, I was able, my nephew and I were able to get him 
get to him in time. And I really praise God for that. Amen. And now the word of God. Praise God for those things that he does. Come on, give him another hand. Well, we can do better than that, because God can do it for you. You can tell him a hallelujah. You can tell him thank you, Jesus. You can glorify him because he's been an awesome father and an awesome God in your life and in my life. Thank God for how God has moved for Pastor and his family. We don't take those things for granted. We call them detours. God will detour you so that you can get to the place that you need to go. And we thank God also for that word on prayer this morning. Was truly blessed by it because sometimes we do try to use God or prayer as a spare wheel, a spare tire. And he's not one that we follow all the time, only when we're in trouble. And it shouldn't be that way. God told us to be consistent in our prayers. And when we do that, he will do awesome things in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. I thank Pastor for the opportunity to share. We know that he had a, a family emergency and, and um, giving me the opportunity to share the word today. Something that was on my heart and my spirit. And I said, Lord, I want to give a, a, a better understanding of this word forgiveness. Forgiveness. Is there a time limit on forgiveness? Okay. So before I go into the word, I wanted to just share some words of wisdom from a young lady. Her name was Lydia. Her name is Lydia Owens. She, uh, she's a high school graduate. Her mother passed prior to her graduation. And these are some things she said I've learned from that experience. She said, I don't define my identity by the things that I accomplish anymore. Because what happens when it fails? She says, I put my trust in Jesus. He's the only one that remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. My worth and your worth is not found in our successes. True satisfaction comes from Jesus. She said it wasn't for the Lord on her side when she went through that death. She wouldn't be able to make it, even though she was valedictorian and she made all these A's and she did so many different things that people appreciated her for. But she said if it wasn't for Jesus, if it wasn't for him, and that was her, her speech during her uh, graduation that she said, I want to thank Jesus because Without him, with all the accomplishments y'all say I made, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be standing in this place. So I, I just thank God for him. And I just want you to just wave those hands one more time just because you're grateful. Just because you're glad. Just because he's good. Even if he hasn't done anything you said that you wanted him to do, he's still good. And he deserves the honor, and he deserves the glory, and he deserves the praise every day of our lives. We thank God for what he does. So going back to, does forgiveness have a timeline? And going to come from Ephesians 4, verses 26 through 27. I'm going to use a lot of different versions today. Some of them will be the message some of them will be the Passion Translation. Some of it will be NLT, but it's all the word. So whatever version that you have, use that. But Ephesians 4, verses 26 through 27 says, Go ahead, be angry. You do well to be angry. But don't use your anger as a fuel for revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil the kind of foothold in your life. And that's the TPT version, the passion version. So the other version that I have says, I think this is message, 
says, but don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. Don't let anger control you or be the fuel of revenge, not for even a day. Don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, the opportunity to manipulate you because that's what he tries to do. And we understand that anger itself is not sin, but how we determine to use it can be. Okay, because if we do things in our pride, if we do things for our own self-interest sometimes, then it can lead to hurting someone else. Jerry Bridges says it this way, to have a temper that requires control is not a mark of ungodliness. It's just a failure to control what it is. So you can't say, oh, because I'm ungodly, you know, that's why I, I brought revenge or anger. He said, no, you can't control this thing. It's within your abilities and your choice. Amen. So you can feel angry at times, but don't let those emotions, those passions, that revenge control you. So as far as forgiveness, having a timeline, from that scripture that we read in Ephesians 4, 26 to 27, he tells us to deal with anger and unforgiveness very quickly. He says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And it's a warning against the dangers of lasting anger. That can lead to negative consequences. One thing that can turn anger into a sinful attitude is to allow it to fester, to hold on to it. It can do the wrong things in your spirit. It can cause you to become bitter, hateful, unforgiving, and it also hinders your relationship with the others. So, as we talk about that time limit, I like how Spurgeon says it. He said, no man or person serves God with doing something tomorrow. You don't wait till tomorrow to accomplish that which God has called you to do. The scripture says today, if you hear my voice, what? Heart not your heart. Dwelling in anger for long periods of time, even if it's beyond a day, even if it's beyond 30 minutes, um, it does give the enemy an opportunity or foothold to cause you to respond the wrong way. It can lead to sin. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to magnify your anger to make you respond in a wrong way that you act out of your emotions. And then you sin not only against God, but you also hurt others. When we allow our temper to lead us, one thing that we need to do is pray. Like our minister Enoch told us this morning, the importance of prayer and not using it as a spare. But we need to use this as a steering wheel because we need God to help us, especially in those situations when we've been hurt, right. mm -hmm. when someone's come against us and we want to get back, yeah. mm -hmm. when we want to use vengeance as an opportunity to uh, put somebody down, we have to pray. Mm -hmm. The scripture says we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us and purify us, yes, yes. okay? So that's what prayer helps do. It brings you back into alignment yes. to what God wants, but he can also purify you. Yes. He can take those things out. So seek forgiveness quickly. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath or your anger that involves revenge or holding on to unforgiveness, bitterness, hurt, or pain. Psalms 37, 8 says, refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It only leads to evil. So when you hold on to those things, the enemy understands. When you hold on to that hurt, that pain, the enemy understands he can do some things.
because you're operating now out of flesh and not out of spirit. So he can put some things in your spirit, in your mind. He can make you remember just how they said it, what they said when they rolled their eyes, when they turned away from you, how loud they were. He'll remember, let you remember all that stuff because he's trying to keep you in the flesh. He doesn't want you to be in the spirit where you can forgive those things. So that's why you need to do it very quickly. And this came to mind because I was uh, watching a, a, a video of a man and he was saying uh, that he was married for so many years, he wasn't faithful to his wife and they got a divorce. Um, his ex-wife passed away and he shared in his story, I never got a chance to say I was sorry. But they were separated for 14 years. But he says, I never got a chance to say I was sorry. Wow. So what, is it a limit on forgiveness? Is it a limit on, on, on how it should be done? You know, and that's what I brought before God. I know that God can forgive us because he forgave me for 21 or 20, 19 years of sin. So I know he can forgive, you know, because when we were yet in our sins, he still brought the love of God to save us. So the period of time, you know, it did impact me because I was like, man, this man, 14 years. And then he says, but I never got to say, I'm sorry. He never got back to her to tell her I did wrong. Okay, so that was 14 years uh, of separation. And then uh, I heard another story from a young lady and this one touched me a lot too. And she said, um, this is a story of my mom and my aunt. They are twins. My mom's twin sister passed away unexpectedly. The feud started off as an argument and quickly turned toxic, entangling the entire family. It became a fallout where people took sides, which threatened to split the family up. Apparently, the argument was over a small amount of money in my grandmother's will. To this day, I don't even really know the facts. All I know that in my opinion, it didn't make any sense. None of my cousins wanted to take sides, but we were quickly dragged into it by my mom and my aunt. I tried to defuse the situation by trying to be a mediator. It didn't work. People didn't listen. It's funny when people argue facts are quickly forgotten and all they remember are the feelings. <laughs> People forget how it really happened, but they remember, man, y'all was so mad, I wanted to knock you out, they remember that. Yeah. So she said, they, they quickly forgot facts, yes, yeah. but they were always remembering the feelings, the things that they felt. My mother's twin wanted to make amends, now the sister wanted to come back, but my mom said she would never forgive her. My mom kept bringing up those emotions, past hers. She would unearth every little aspect of portrayal that she felt that her sister did to her to keep that unforgiveness going. So after the few years, my mom cut off my aunt altogether. To say the least, it was heartbreaking to me. It impacted my relationship with my other family members, my cousins, and also my mother. My aunt passed away without my mother getting the matter straight. What's the time limit? What's the time limit for forgiveness? The enemy likes to bring up the emotions. He's into the flesh, y'all. Yes. That, that's what he likes to do. He brings up the emotions and the feelings that happened, sometimes not the fact. Like she said, it was really nothing. It was just about a little bit of money. It could have been $200 and you're gonna fuss over a 
Well, because some of my twin got the money and I didn't, you know. But that's one of Satan's favorite tools to cause discord among the brethren. That's something that he loves to do. And he will implant that bitterness in you. It happens so easily. One person does something wrong without realizing it. And then the person who felt like they were done wrong holds a grudge or holds bitterness. And pretty soon everyone's busy in emotions, in hate, in anger, in bitterness, but not in love. So one thing that negativity does, when you hold on to those grudges and the bitterness, it becomes part of your character. It becomes that you begin to filter everything through that hurt. You'll filter every relationship, even if it's a good one, through the pain that you felt because you're not willing to let go. Prayer is the key. Like Minister Enoch said, prayer is the key. And you may say that I just can't forgive. You can. It's a choice. It's a personal choice. I'm not saying that you still won't hurt. I won't say that you still won't feel good on the inside. But God commanded us to forgive. So you can do it. You can do it. And then you can pray about the residue of the pain of the discomfort that you feel regarding that circumstance and that situation. But forgive. Yes, yes. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, feel right to forgive. You don't have to feel without pain to forgive. You can forgive while you're in pain. Amen. You can still do that. Some, some people will say, I'm just gonna wait till all this pain goes. It ain't gonna come until you release it. So forgive first, allow, pray, and ask God to help you with the rest. Ask him to remove the hurt and the pain. He'll help you, but you have to ask him. So choose forgiveness and not bitterness. Bitterness from in unforgiveness can turn into depression. It can turn into heart disease. It can turn into arthritis. I remember a story that was told about an uh, elderly lady. She was in her 70s, and one thing that she couldn't do was forgive a member of her family. After hearing the story about forgiveness, her hands were like this. She couldn't open her hands to move her hands. But once she forgave, fingers started moving. She was able to move her hands again. Pain was gone. Because holding in all that poison yes, yes. in your system, that bitterness, that grudge, that grief, it causes illness within your body. Everything's connected in your body. And when you hold on to those things, you can cause illness within you. You can cause heart disease. You can cause strokes. You can cause diabetes. You can cause all those things because you won't let go. So even though there is no time limit to forgiveness, I encourage you, if you haven't, if it's been 10 or 20 years, I'm talking about those on streaming, if it's been a week, I don't care your time frame, forgive. Let go of those things that are holding you bound. Allow God to deliver you. Pray. Forgive first, because God said we can. He said, if you, you can't forgive, I can't forgive you. So you need to let go of those things. I don't care. if it, Even if it's someone that ha has passed, God told us to bless those that curse us. And, you know, that's the spirit realm. You know, some people are like, mm, I'm going to bless somebody that hurt me. The, the scriptures say... <laughs> To bless those that curse you. And sometimes because we are fallen, that we do operate out of the flesh a lot of times. And we seek revenge and we seek to get that person back. Yeah. 
That's part of our nature, naturally, okay? But God wants us to live spiritually by letting go of that. And he said, if they did you wrong, can you please let it go? Bless those that curse you, those that don't treat you right, those in your jobs, in your positions, those within your family unit. Forgive, forgive. Because when you choose to act out of bitterness and hurt, you're locking your own self up in prison. And when you think the other person is gonna feel the pain and the defeat, it's you that's gonna feel the pain and the defeat. So stop drinking that poison of unforgiveness. Stop holding on to it for so long. Let those things go. So, um, Peter Harbin said this, he said, a divine law is what we want for other people comes back to us. So if you want hurt to other people, it's gonna come back to you. Why? Because you reap what you sow. So don't forget that while you're going through your anger period, that whatever you spewing out there, whatever you saying, don't get mad when it comes back to you like Jacob and Laban. You deceived me. You've been deceiving people all your life, Jacob. Come on. Now you mad because somebody deceiving you. No, you gonna reap what you sow. So before you go out in anger and do things to hurt somebody else, pray, ask God to help you through that so you're able to let those things go. So you're not poisoning yourself. Because whatever you spewing out there, it's going to come back. Have the spirit of reconciliation. That's what we're supposed to have with the ministry of reconciliation as the people of God. Fully give, fully forgive, and then reconcile. Those are two different things. You can't forgive somebody of what they've done against you, but to reconcile takes some effort, yes. takes some energy. The scriptures say endeavor to keep the unity in the body of Christ. You gotta work that thing. Yes. You gotta be consistent. You gotta put some time in it. But to forgive, it just takes you saying, I forgive you for what you've done and you, you can move on. But if you wanna reconcile in that relationship. If you want to pull that relationship back together the way it was before, that's going to take some work. Amen. Amen. You got to endeavor to keep the unity. Yes. Yes. You got to work at it. You got to put some effort into it. You got to put some energy into it because it's not going to happen by itself. But forgiveness, it does. And as we talk about that spirit of reconciliation, you can go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 17 through 20, which talks about the forgiveness and reconciliation. When someone, I think this message, when someone come, becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same anymore. A new life has begun. All these new things are from God who brought us back to himself through what Jesus Christ did. And God has given us the privilege of urging everyone to come into his favor and be reconciled to him. For God was in Christ restoring the world to himself, no longer counting men's sins against them or blotting them out. This is a wonderful message he has given us to tell others. We are Christ's ambassadors. God is still using us to speak to you. We beg of you as though Christ himself was pleading with you. Receive the love that God offers you. Be reconciled to God. And another version says this, all this comes from God who settled the relationship between us and him. And then called us to settle our relationship with each other. 
God put the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world, the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he's doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences, all right, and enter into God's work of making things right between them. So that's what we're supposed to be doing as people of God, as ones that say that we're called by his name, that we're supposed to be helping people bring things together, not causing discord, not gossip, not saying you right, girl, you're right, man, I wouldn't go back. No, forgive. You may not always reconcile the situation. I have to go back to the same relationship you have, but you need to forgive. You need to let go of those things. Forgiveness is a process that includes surrendering the outcome. Surrendering whatever the outcome is. Don't be saying, well, they should have said, I'm sorry too, because they hurt me. No, this is you. This is you. You got to do your part and say, I've been wrong, or I apologize, whatever happened between us. That's not up to you to decide how the person takes that information. You're not responsible for the outcome. You're responsible for doing what God says. So when you do the forgiving, okay, let God take care of the outcome. Yes, you should try to reconcile if you want that relationship back, but no, like I said, that is going to take time. It's going to take work. If you want to reconcile the relationship back to where it was before, it's just not going to happen magically because you forgave. It's going to take you putting some work into it. But if they're not willing to reconcile, you've done your part with forgiving. Okay? Romans in Romans 12, it states, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with everyone. So you should make an effort to live peaceably with everyone. You know, that's something that we should do with everyone, but if they don't want to reconcile, you can't make them reconcile. No. Worry never robs tomorrow of its sorrow. It only saps today of its strength. So we don't want to worry about it um, and, and have regrets because a person may not want to reconcile with you because that's not going to give you strength to move on. Regret seeks to change the pain of the past, but it prevents you from experiencing the joy of the present. So when you regret, when you're holding on to those things, it is sapping something from you. It's taking some energy from you. And it's not allowing you to experience the joy. It's never too late to say you're sorry. It's never too late to get it right. Yes. But the scriptures do tell us, do it as quickly as we can. And if you haven't got a chance to do it yet, if you say, oh, it's been 14 years I've been holding that grudge again, it's time now. He said it was last week, it's time now. If it was yesterday, it's time now, okay? And always remember that it's much easier to destroy a relationship than build it up. You can build, you can destroy a relationship by one word or one action. And we saw that with Adam and Eve. Through their disobedience, they impacted the whole human race. Achan, because of his sin, he caused the whole country to be defeated in war. Rehoboam, because of his decision regarding worship, caused a whole division within the country. So it's easier to destroy something than build it up. But with endeavoring to keep the unity, it's going to take you working at it. So don't get mad because you say, I forgave so and so, but our relationship ain't right yet. What you doing? What are you working on to put it back together? Because it's going to take some work to do that piece. Forgiveness, great. Need to do that. 
But endeavor to keep the unity, you gonna have to work on that. Yes, yes. It's gonna have to be built back up. Yes. Where the mistrust has happened, where the hurt has happened, where the brokenness has happened, that's not for God to do. That's for you to do. Amen. You pray and say, God, help me with how to bring this relationship back together. But God has already given you the power to be much more than conquerors. Because great is he that's in you than anything that's in this world. So the choice is up to you to work on a relationship to reconcile it, Amen. to put it back together. It's never too late to forgive. It's never too late to make amends. Even if it's someone that has already passed away. And, and maybe some people online say, well, that person, you know, they hurt me and I've never been able to give that up. Uh, when you hold on to those pains, that hurt, that fear, you get preoccupied by that. You, you ever notice with people that may have been hurt, they can talk about that thing like it happened two minutes ago? Because they're still holding on to that stuff. And it's things that you have to let go of because you can get too preoccupied and then it causes the health issues and all of those things that happen. The only way is prayer and forgiveness. Ask God to help, to be there for you, and ask forgiveness for yourself. Even if it's a, a place where um, that person has passed away, you can write a letter. Some people, you know, the psychologists, you know, say you need to write a letter, say what that person did, how they hurt you, that you forgive, and that you forgive yourself. And then after you do that, you can tear up that letter because you let it go and throw it away. But even if that person has passed, you can still get rid of that. So I'm not saying that it's a time limit on forgiveness, but God tells us to make amends as quickly as possible. So forgiveness is not denying someone did you wrong but it's abandoning all that resentment and hurt and pain. So it's not saying that nobody did it wrong, that they didn't say it right, that they tried to hurt your feelings, but it's allowing yourself to let go, to abandon all of that hurt and that pain. All right, letting go of those things. So forgiveness is about you. It's not about letting the other person off the hook. Okay. Forgiveness is not about carrying the baggage with you. It's a kindness to yourself to let those things go. Letting go of anger and bitterness, and this is from psychology. All right, letting go of that anger and, biz and bitterness it says it leads to a more peaceful and meaningful life. And this is research that's done. All right, so when you let go of those things, it causes you to live better. So remember when you're talking about forgiveness, since every one of us have things that may come up in our lives and our situations and circumstances, but you have to be intentional with forgiveness. You have to be intentional. That has to be on the top of the line. You have to be strong in saying, I'm not gonna let that person's hurt or how they said it keep me from forgiveness. So don't struggle with it. Don't wait. Go ahead and do the forgiveness. Ask God to help you with the emotions and the feeling and the brokenness because all that stuff can lead to abandonment all right, make you feel that you've been abandoned by God, by people, all right. But God wants to restore you, and the only way that he can restore you is by you doing some things. That means you let go. Amen. That means you're asking for forgiveness and asking God to help you. So forgiveness, is there a timeline? No, there is no timeline with forgiveness. But God does tell us to do it as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm. Begin working with, on forgiveness with the other person. 
even if that other person has passed on, write the letter, do whatever you need to do in order to get out of that because it does impact you not only spiritually but physically. Find freedom, experience the joy that God wants you to have from those that you feel may have hurt you. And it does take a strong person to forgive. It does take you doing something maybe outside of your character because the flesh don't want to do that, okay? But we have to go outside of the flesh because um, hurt people often hurt others, okay? Bitter people usually going to be bitter against other people. And remember, you don't deserve the pain that you're putting on yourself by holding on to stuff. You don't deserve that pain. All you got to do is let go. All you got to do is let go. Release yourself from bondage. Release yourself from prison. Because if you hold on to that, it can lead to depression. It can lead to resentment. It can lead to bitterness, which the enemy loves. Because he doesn't want you happy. He doesn't want you to live in peace. He doesn't want you to be prosperous. He wants to keep you bound, and he knows, oh, this is a good way to do it. I made so-and-so come at her so hard. I know she ain't going to forget this one. But forget. Let go. Unchecked anger leads to breakup in relationship. Unchecked anger leads to breakup in relationships. And that could be in marriages, that could be among family members, children, moms or dad. Remember, don't hold that anger in. You may have to talk about it with them, but don't hold that thing in, because when you least expect it, and they bump you the wrong way, it's gonna come out. Because you never let it go. And it's gonna lead to your hurt and their hurt, because you need people. We need relationships. We don't need to be separated and divided. We don't need to be fighting against one another. We need to be with each other and building each other up. Because the enemy has that foothold and he loves that foothold. Because you know he likes confusion and you know he loves division. He doesn't like anybody being together and actually love because he knows love can build you. And he doesn't want to build the people of God. He wants to destroy. So he will bring in those things that would cause you to be angry or unforgiving. So the other part that I like, and this is just a point of wisdom, don't measure God by what happens in your life. Measure God by what Jesus did for us on Calvary. Amen. Don't measure him by this thing is happening and that thing is happening. No, what did Jesus do? He died for my victory that I can be an overcomer. He died to wash my sins away and to let me know that I could make it. He died and said he would never leave me nor forsake me, but he's gonna always be my present help in the time of trouble. Remember that instead of the circumstance or the situation that may be happening in your life right now. So keep a short account is what I'm asking y'all to do. Is it a limit? No. <clears throat> Can you do it at any time? Yes. yes, yes. And, and, and I, I, I implore those that are online, those within the building, if you've been holding something that should not be, to quickly let go of those things. And we, we're going to pray right now. If everybody would just stand. Can you stand with me? Those are online, you don't have to if you're cooking or whatever you might be doing. Uh, Y'all might be eating. I saw that egg go over my mouth. No. Um, but no, this is the time that I just want you to focus on God right now. And I want you to actually allow God to let go. Some people have been feeling some pain, y'all. My goodness. Some brokenness. Some people online. Uh, some traumatic events that's keeping you to think that you're abandoned by God. That 
you can't get it right. But God wants to do this right now for you. So just raise those hands before the Lord and say, Lord, I know you never lost the battle. And you see the things, Lord, that I'm dealing with right now and greater. Are you, are you that's in me, that's in me. Than, anything than anything that's in this world? In this world. And, I and I ask you to help me to, help me. to move, forward move forward with letting go, with letting go. Of, pain, of pain, of fear, of, fear, of, worry, of worry, of anxiety, of, anxiety. of those things of those that keep me bound. But Lord, I know you're my deliverer. I know you're my strength. I know you're my help. And Lord, I pray you come to the rescue. Come to my rescue. Come and bless now. Come and heal now. Come and deliver now. Come and set free now. Give me hope. Lord. Give me joy, God. Give me peace, God. And give me your godly wisdom as I move forward in you. In Jesus' name. And those that are in need of salvation today, maybe you don't have a father, maybe you don't have, you had some hurt and harms and things that happened in your lifetime or when you were young or even when you're older, you've been abused, you've been hurt, you've been trampled on, you feel alone. But God is with you today. And he's not going to leave you alone. He's never lost the battle. And he won't fail you today. So if you have not received Christ in your life, you just have to say these words after me. And say, Lord, I repent of my sins. And I ask you today to come into my life. I pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit, that he will keep me until you come again. And Lord, I ask that you help me my, have my own personal experience with you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Oh, give me my hand. Praise God. You can have your seats and just thanking God for that forgiveness, man. That helped me so much because it's like, is it a time limit? No, it's no time limit. But man, when you do it faster, you get on a whole lot more of that pain and fear and worry and all those things that the enemy tries to do to keep you under. Uh, so, yeah, forgive quickly. And, and don't hold on to things any longer. But I know that God is there. And I hope that you're, you've been lifted. I hope that hearts have been mended. I hope that you take the opportunity to go and get forgiveness from that individual that you maybe had been holding things against. Go and get it straight today, because God is with you. I think all those that are online, if you like to give, you can give to the bodyfaithcc.org online and give an offering. We are doing our rice campaign because we, uh, we do missions in Haiti and we offer food to them to, um, to give to them so that they can succeed. So please, if you'd like to give uh, to the missions of Haiti, you can put that uh, in the comments that this gift is to Haiti, to Haiti Missions. And just remember that God loves you and he doesn't want you to hold on to unforgiveness or to pain. So just go forward in him and have a blessed and wonderful week. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And those that are in the house, it's time for our offerings at this time. So um, you can get those offerings together uh, to give to the Lord at this time.
and the R while we're waiting for you to do those. We're going to be going to our communion soon. Um, so if there are any testimonies of God's goodness, you can share at this time as we prepare for our communion. If you have your offerings already together, you can just bring it and, and put it there in the boxes up front.